Hello, today I have with me Bernard Fairman, CEO and founder of Asset Manager Foresight Group. Thank you for joining me, Bernard. Thank you. First of all, could you please tell us what Foresight Group is, what it does and how it generates returns? Yes, yeah, so I started Foresight Group in 1984, a long time ago. At that time, we just did venture capital. But now we've got about um, just shy of £8 billion pounds under management split into three different areas. First area being um, renewable energy infrastructure assets. This is solar parks, wind farms, batteries, those kind of things. Uh, and that's about seven billion of the, of the money that we uh, manage. Um, secondly, we've got um, uh, regional private equity investments across the UK. We've got offices across the UK. We make investments in local businesses, out of local offices, in, in various uh, local parts of the UK. And that's an a, a, um, activity which is needed very much at the minute with the effects of, uh, of COVID and the effects that that's had on small business. And finally, we have a capital management business. Um, and what that does is invest in listed equities around the world uh, that own real assets. And what it tries to do is over any five year period, offer CPI plus 3%. Um, and it offers daily liquidity because that's um, a, an OIC format. Foresight Group has a number of options for retail investors interested in the solar energy theme. Could you talk us through some of them and explain why you think investors should have exposure to solar assets? Uh, let me talk you through um, two to start with. Foresight Solar Fund is our um, investment trust quoted on the London Stock Exchange by definition daily liquidity, uh, although it's closed ended. Um, capitalised about 650 million with about 350 million of borrowings. It's the biggest um, investment trust in the solar space listed on the London stock market. And it makes its returns from um, uh, owning solar parks across the UK, um, uh, in parts of Australia and also uh, in, in, um, in Spain. Um, so that, that, that's one option. Uh, another option uh, I referred to earlier are OICs. OICs have about, um, two OICs um, that we have in the space, own about um, 15 to 20% of their assets in the solar area. They're not 100% solar dedicated, they're real assets, as I said a little earlier. Um, but th that's another way of, of uh, getting into that market. The International Energy Agency's latest World Energy Outlook report claims that solar is the new king of electricity. What's your understanding of the growth trajectory for solar power? 25% compound for the indefinite future, I'd say, in a simple answer. When we first got into solar in 2007, and we were the first in the UK to get into it, um, we took the view that because costs were likely to go down every year, because it's basically at its heart a semiconductor, and, and those uh, of your viewers um, that follow these things will be aware there's, there's something called Moore's Law, which says the price for the semiconductor goes down basically ad infinitum, um, as more that produce, the, the geometries get smaller and so on. So we took the view that the costs will go down and costs were everything. Uh, when we first started investing in solar in 2008, we were paying eight euro cents a watt. Today we're paying 0.25 euro cents a watt. That's more than a 90%, 95% cost reduction um, in, in what, 14 years. Um, we see that continuing. So we think that solar will dominate the um, backbone core energy production of the world, um, increasingly so as time goes by, um, with probably hydrogen as the, um, as the fuel of choice for travel. A recent newspaper report says that Professor Martin Green, the so-called father of photovoltaics, is working on a stackable solar cell which could boost power output. As well as technological innovation, what is the outlook for the solar industry in your view? Uh, a modern solar cell is about 18%, 1.8% efficient. 18%, that, that's pretty low. There are technical issues to be solved um, quite clearly, otherwise the number would have gone up by now. When we first started investing, it was maybe 16%. So there's been not much change it, it, over quite a long period. But as more and more um, research effort is focused in this area, a quantum leap of the sort that, that's been suggested, maybe up to 25 or 30, you can see the consequence, because each watt of power becomes that much cheaper um, and the economics work better. 
So, I mean, in summary, solar, I agree with everything you've said about solar, and it's entirely down to cost, and it's entirely down to mass production. Bernard Fairman of Foresight Group, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you very much.